I've been forcing myself to learn Blender. I've already created a space cantina to play chess in and a sci-fi dance club to show off my moves? But did you really think I was gonna stop there? You see, I told you I had something planned for hitting 10,000 subscribers. And these last two scenes were merely practice for something much bigger. Two years ago, before I even knew Blender, I birthed an idea. An idea of how to brilliantly start each and every live stream video. And this is what I came up with. In case you can't tell, it's a sci-fi drive-in movie theater. And definitely not a random drawing that I cut apart and put in my live streams. No, 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 that would be tacky and lame. And tacky. Well, this is the whole reason why I forced myself to learn Blender in the first place. It was finally time for me to redeem myself and 3D model a drive-in movie theater. After firing up my toaster of a computer, I hopped into Blender. I started by blocking out the scene, using a large plane for the floor and some basic cubes for the screen and the ticket stand. I put in some placeholders for cars and pointed them towards the screen. All of this was just to try to figure out the composition, which is one of the things I'm weakest at. In particular, I found the landscape to be especially difficult. I could just imagine how hard it was going to be in the future to texture the mountains and get the scale correct. I tried lots of different shapes and kinds of mountains, but never really felt satisfied. And so. I got frustrated and for a bit I decided to move on to something more familiar. Hard surface modeling. The movie screen was going to be the central focus so I wanted it to have a good level of detail. Instead of just having a giant white box for the projector to shine on, I took inspiration from the portal games and made the screen out of these tall panels. I put in some basic lighting and moved on to what I think is the best part of the scene. Popcorn. Now what kind of live stream drive and movie theater show would this be if our ticket building didn't have a glorious popcorn machine? This is my first time working with particle systems in Blender. I put a little donut shape in the pot to emit little pieces of low poly popcorn that I quickly modeled. I put a force field under it and with some little adjustments to the particle, we have popcorn popping out of the pot. I also made some simple drinks and chips to put next to the popcorn. For the outside of the ticket building, I made a small Star Wars Easter egg that you might be able to spot in the final render. I experimented with cloth simulations for the first time, and this is how I basically did it. I added a cloth modifier to a subdivided plane. I made a vertex group with all the parts of the cloth that I wanted to be stationary and then ran the simulation. It sounds simple, but it, it, it took me a while to get to that point. For the roof, I added some vents and panels, put some random boxes in, kind of like it was a Star Wars roof or a spaceship. After all this, the ticket building was looking pretty good. Now the cars. If you told me to draw a car, I would draw this. If you told me to draw a sci-fi flying car, it would probably look like this. So, if I'm gonna model anything relatively decent, I'm gonna need some reference images. With reference images in tow, I tried to create six or seven unique vehicles. I didn't have to learn anything too special for this one, it was just some hard surface modeling. I created a spaceship looking one and a police car looking one, and I did throw in a couple easter eggs that only the true fans will be able to spot. All I had to do was animate each one to hover up and down on a loop, and we were good. I knew adding trees, rocks, plants, and grass would be difficult, and this is my first time doing it, and usually the first time you do anything in Blender, it usually crashes and, and burns. Luckily, there are a lot of free assets out there when it comes to plants, so finding models of bushes and trees wasn't the hardest part. The hardest part was spreading out thousands of these assets in a natural way. I knew using Blender geometry nodes was the key. It lets you use nodes to dictate how geometry appears in the scene, so you can set it to scatter a specific object on a specific surface. Now, I I decided to save myself some time and I eventually bought a plugin called GeoScatter. It gives you a more user-friendly way of doing this. For me, it just saved a lot of time because I had some presets that I could use. After getting to a point where all the plants were scattered around and it was looking good enough, I realized that the trees and bushes needed to be animated. Not only animated, but the animation needed to perfectly loop after 15 seconds. Maybe there are models out there that come with perfectly looping animations, but Mine did not. So I ended up hand animating each branch by selecting all the vertices and creating two separate key shapes. 
Shape keys are pretty cool. They let you morph an object in a non-destructive way. By having multiple key shapes, you can animate between them without affecting your original model. I learned that this was really good for character facial animations, and this worked perfectly for my tree branches as well. Okay, so I finally got around to it and I revisited the mountains. I can't remember where I got it, but I found a free mountain model online. I copied it three times and I was surprised how it turned out. I'm not sure why I didn't just look for free models in the first place. It would have saved me a lot of time. This is probably a good time to talk about all the things that I wasted my time on. I spent a couple days making a planet to put in the background of the sky. Ended up not liking the way it looked, so I scratched it. For scale, I thought about putting some big buildings in the distance. So I spent several days making this satellite building that looked pretty good, but in the end, I didn't think I needed it, so it got cut. I spent hours trying to add these little moth bugs to the scene around the lights. I was even following lots of tutorials, but it took way too much time for what it was worth, so I gave up on it. And I took a whole weekend making decorations for when Halloween eventually comes around. Each one of these things were just symptoms of me watching random Blender videos on YouTube and thinking to myself, yeah, yeah, I could do that too, when really I should have just stuck to simplicity. As always, the scene finally comes to life when you start texturing. This time around, I learned that textures can use displacement maps. So you might have a flat wall with no geometry, but then you slap a texture on that bad boy and all of a sudden it has bumps and cracks, adding a lot of detail that the light even picks up on. This saves you so much time. I still wonder if I'm doing something wrong when it comes to textures though, because it always slows down my computer like crazy. Right now, the only solution that I've found is to only use material and rendered previews when you need to. Now that I had everything modeled and textured, I made some final tweaks to the lights on the building and cars. I made sure all the animations looped correctly, and I separated the scene into separate layers. We have the sky, mountains, meadow, trees, screen, cars, foreground, interior of the ticket building, popcorn machine, and the bush. This one is for all you nerds out there. Many of the layers just needed to be rendered once because they didn't have any animations and were static. The other layers were animated so they had more frames. This is how many minutes it was going to take to render each layer. So in other words, it was finally time to send my computer on its seven day render journey. This video was meant to celebrate hitting 10,000 subscribers and well, let's just say I'm having a hard time keeping up with you maniacs. To celebrate, I held a featured live stream where we raffled off the opportunity for subscribers to permanently add their names to the scene. 10 names were drawn and we added them to various places like cars and boxes. My dream is to make videos and live streams full time and your support for the channel has been tremendous. On Patreon, I have even more behind the scenes content, including the 3D assets that I have modeled for each of these scenes. All of them are for you to download and use in your personal projects. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the final render.